You are listening to the Backstage Pass podcast, hosted by Hannah Trigwell and brought to you by Tom and Ben Sharp, hello. Hello. So I best know you as a drummer who's played live and in session. How did you first get into drumming? I started in secondary school, uh, in year seven. You start a new school, you make new friends. I made a new friend, I went to his birthday party and he had a drum kit because his dad was like a bit of a rocker. So um, <laughs> immediately I was, I was just drawn to this drum kit and uh, yeah, they let me have a go. And then I went home, told my parents I needed to get a drum kit for my birthday and they got me one. And wow. literally, yeah, that was it. We were on. Like an acoustic kit? Yeah, acoustic kit straight away. I was really fortunate to grow up in... Um, a detached house so my neighbours were spread away and my parents just let me go to town. You said that you started off with an acoustic kit do you think it's better to start off with an acoustic kit rather um, than an electric one? I don't really think it makes a difference now obviously. Do you not? I mean the electric kits nowadays are so good like if you get the high-end ones which if you're starting mm. out you're probably not going to get a high-end one but um, honestly as long as you're getting a bit of playing on an acoustic kit, I think you're fine to practice on an electric kit because you can develop all the fundamentals. You know, you can start working on your technique with your hands and you can get your coordination down so you can practice all the exercises and whatnot you need to. You will, like most people who do have an electric kit, generally prefer our lessons on an acoustic kit when they come to school. They're, they're buzzing to be sat behind a kit and actually hearing it and playing it on a real kit because it does feel different. Yeah. On, if you've got a cheap electric kit, and an, a normal acoustic kit, the feel is totally different. If you're just starting out and you're playing on an electric kit, you'll be able to you you'll be able to play some beats and feel pretty damn good about yourself. And then you might sit on an acoustic kit and it won't quite feel just as good yet. So you have to like grind away a bit a bit more. Like developing a feel is what I'm getting at. I think yeah. it's easier to develop a better feel on an acoustic kit. I think that's interesting. I've never really thought about that before. Having an electric kit to start with, I think, is good. But okay. so, is, so is having an acoustic kit. I think electric kits are great because you can develop all the fundamentals so you can work on your coordination, which is like mm. a really, really big thing. Literally, I come in my shed uh, regularly before work, so I'm in here at like 7 a.m. I, I mean, you call it a shed, but <laughs> I feel like you can't call it a shed anymore because I, I saw it like... I saw you post about it on um, Instagram, I think, as you were building it and stuff. And it it, it kind of was, a, I mean, a, go- a really good shed, but now it's like a, almost its own. It's, a, it's an it's extension. It's a little studio, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's an extension. to me. It's a, n- a whole other room to my house, essentially, but just in the garden, Yeah. which is yeah. wicked. But so I'll come in here like before work at like 7 a.m. And I, obviously I'm not going to play my full kit at 7 a.m. because I like, I like my neighbours too. Um <laughs> But I will play on like my pads. Um, so I've right. got like a drum pedal pad on the right, one on the left, and just a pad there. Um, yeah. And I'll work on my fundamentals with that, like my coordination stuff. And electric kits, it's just like doing that, except you've actually got the sound of your kit in there as well. You recently told me that, and we won't say who it is because it's not been announced yet, but that you're about to play a, a big, big session um, for someone as a Radio 1, BBC Radio 1 live lounge session. Yeah. Are you nervous about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, obviously, I've never, I've never been to Radio 1. Do you still 1, get but, nervous? Yeah, I do, fully, if, especially yeah. if it's something I really care about. Like, But, yeah, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. When I got the call for that, it was a big, woo, like a big moment. Yeah. Of, wow, okay, cool. Do you think that you'd ever be a touring drummer? You know, like I'd 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 love to um, have a mix of everything. I always used to, if it, mm. if you asked me that ten years ago, I'd have been like, yes, that is what I want to yeah. do. I want to tour the world, and that's it. I'm thirty now, and I've got a house and a girlfriend that I live with, <laughs> and I yeah. make a nice income talking about drums, and I love drums, and I love talking mm. about drums. If I'm just strictly touring with one band, then I always feel like I'm actually not even going to be playing the kit as much as I would if I'm at home. And I, that's like, I love... That's true, I you know. love playing the drums so much that I, mm. I'm not saying no, because, you know, if that if that gig came across, if that gig came up, then... Oh, I don't know, 
Well, I don't know. It'd, it'd be a tough conversation. You don't actually play that much music when you're on tour. Even if, even if, say, you do like a, a couple of radio sessions in the day and then you play at night, you're going to be really playing music for less than two, three hours a day. And you yeah. do so much more than that now. That's Just, it, yeah. Yeah. You're going to have your, your sound checks and then you're going to have your show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be happy like with my pads and whatnot. Remote recording has been around for a while, but it's like it's taken mm. off now. It's at another level, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah. Because you've got like all it's all it takes is you need a, a laptop and an interface and a few mics and boom, yeah. off you go. Like you could electric kits come in really handy again because nearly, like even the hundred and fifty quid ones have got MIDI inputs. Bosh yeah. that in, bosh that into Logic. You've got your Logic sounds, or you bought a drum pack, and you've got some wicked yeah. drum sounds, and you can le legit record pro sounding drums on your 150 quid Alesis or whatever kit name no brands I don't yeah. know at home and Bob's your uncle man yeah yeah um, or you can spend thousands of pounds on mics and record your acoustic kit game changer do you play any other kind of drums well I mean I can play a cajon I'm not a cajon expert okay I feel like there's a bit of a stigma around cajons at the moment. I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of hate on cajons online <laughs> recently. I mean, I, I a never lot post of hate. I'll never post hate online about it, but I would I would tell you that I don't <laughs> like cajons. <laughs> right. I would yeah. just, I'd just rather I'd just rather play a kit like really quietly. Learn how to play yeah. the drums super quietly, and then you don't need a cajon. Every time I record my snare as well at the minute, I've been like layering it up with like just old drum heads just putting them on top it just thickens the sound it makes it really really fat just that's cool that's a good tip cheeky little tips yeah if you want your snare to sound much more 80s just bang on another old head on top of it like cut it into the right size stick it on boosh gives you a right nice a nice fat sound yeah my ride symbol i've got at the minute i'm going to show you it because it's so it's so nice man. look at that Looks like people are like. Where looks like get... something out of Lord of the Rings. I know, right? It literally looks like I like dug it up out of my garden or something. Um, <laughs> it's it's super dry, and I love it. Yeah. But not appropriate for absolutely not appropriate for all stuff. Like that wouldn't right. go down in um, certain settings, but it would go down super well in other settings. You're someone who has like stuck to their instrument, like mad really, and just yeah. carried on honing your craft and honing your craft and honing your craft. And I know that you're really passionate about it and, and could talk about this stuff forever. Is there one particular thing that fascinates you more than the rest about about drumming and about drums? Um, yeah, but it kind of relates I see you to trying like... out a lot of like beats and stuff, you know, little like um, rhythm changes and all that kind of thing. Like my, I always feel like my whole purpose in this world is just to get better at things. Cause it's literally, it's the only time that I'm, I'm really present. Otherwise yeah. I'll be like, if, if I, well, even if I'm like walking down the street, I'm thinking about something. When I'm sat at my drums, then I'm like, and, and I'm working on an exercise. I'm fully present cause I have to be, to be able to get better at that exercise. And I'll just mm. drill things over and over and over. And it makes me feel good. So that's like literally that's why I play the drums because it makes me feel good. I love grooves. But at the minute, I'm just really yeah. into people who groove. I'm going to give you a list of people, or I'm going to give you one guy to check out. Oh, no, I'm going to give you three guys to check out in terms of grooves. There's um, this guy on Instagram to check out, Carter McLean. He's just the grooviest mofo. Is bad. Really? Like so good. Yeah, just so good. And then <laughs> Benny Greb as well. Like. He's just the yeah. Don. He's kind of the Don of, of drums at the minute. He's just like ruling and uh, rightly so because he, he's so good. I love just seeing something like that on Instagram or like, especially it's, it tends to happen with me with like drums or um, particularly bassists as well. If they're, if they're film like a groovy video and you and you just end up like getting the face and like it's yeah, and just thanks, great. Friends. Yeah, I've just started yeah. following <laughs> loads of bassists and just uh, my evenings yeah. are now spent watching a lot of bassists just just straight. It's that little kid called Aaron the bassist on Instagram. I just started following hey, him as well. I was just about old. to say about him. He's you ever so seen anyone good. groove so hard at eight though? It's like no. oh, mate. And he's and he's like his head's like I mean he's really like getting it and it's 
I mean, I hope he carries on, but if he does, he's going to be seriously like ridiculous when he's older. Dave Grohl just put up a video, um, like a, a reaction to hers and, and shredded along to a track of his as well. Because she did a track. Oh, of nice. Him, and, then, and he put one back. But yeah, she's a little rocker, like honestly, crushing the rock game. Rock and roll, she is. <laughs> she's she's going to be killing it. I love seeing young kids who are like shredders because, not just shredders, but yeah. who are like just super into it because you don't get that good like without putting in time as well. You can be naturally good at something, mm. but you know they've put in time on that and they must love it yeah. to have put in that time. That's what I always think. One of my final questions is, what is your track of the week? Nice. Uh, Yusuf Days and Tom Mish, Tidal Wave. I think that might be on my current, like, favourites playlist, you know. Nice. Yeah, they just bought an album out. Tom Mish is so solid. Yeah. So good. When he's he's got Yusuf Days on drums as well. Oh, my God, it's so good. Have you heard of Yusuf Days before? Really? Yeah. He's No. Oh, he's killing it at the minute. Yeah, he's so good. That whole album's really, really good. It's my go-to at the minute. Not just that one song. Listen to the whole album. Yeah, it's wicked. I'll check it out. And yeah, what is the best lesson that you've learned in your career so far? The best lesson I've learned in my career? Um, in terms of, like, progressing at what I do or in terms of, like, the best lesson I've uh, learned? All right, I'd be, a good, be a good dude and uh, be good at your job. Like, be good yeah. at what you do and be a good guy. Be humble and... People are going to want to work with you. If it's to do, if you're looking to get more work, you've got. To, it's as much about your craft as it is as you being a good dude. I'm sure. Like my work mm. all comes through word of mouth. As much as we like Instagram and whatnot, like literally ninety percent of my work, ninety five percent of my work comes through word of mouth. So. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said by just seeing people in in real life. I mean, like. You can see if a drummer's good on Instagram, but you can't necessarily tell if they're a nice person. So somebody who gives you a recommendation of a session player or a teacher or whatever it might be, if you get a recommendation of a friend, yeah, you at least know that the friend thinks that that person is a good person. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and if your friend thinks they're a good person, then you know they're your friend, so you're going to trust their judgment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My friends, if we so we've got this old group of friends, a bit relevant this, but I've got an old group of friends, and uh, <laughs> we'll meet each other like twice a year, and then there'll be a new person each time we meet, and it's because someone else has like met a friend and brought them along, and then all of a sudden this guy's like a best mate as well, and the but it's yeah. because it's so weird like that, isn't it? Weird world. Yeah, you you trust your friends, don't you, on the yeah. per- perceptions of people, I guess. Fully. Well, thanks so much for speaking to me. It's been awesome. I will let you get yeah. back to your drumming. <laughs> thanks, mate. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. And I will see you next time on Backstage Pass. <laughs>